Sega. Attila was born into an uncertain and savage world. His people, the Huns, were hardened by a nomadic life of conquer, and their seat of power was under constant threat from the Germanic tribes under their rule. Almost all accounts of the Huns come from their enemies. Jordanes the Goth wrote of them as scarcely human, a savage race who made their foes flee in horror because their aspect was so fearful. Though they live in the form of men, they have the cruelty of wild beasts. Into this world came a man more ruthless, more bloodthirsty, and more terrifying than any before. The Christians thought him sent from hell itself and named him the Scourge of God. His name was Attila the Hun. Attila had to struggle for dominance from an early age. He and his brother Blader commanded troops from youth and saw bloodshed on the battlefield from their teens. In 434, Attila and Blader rose to power with the death of their uncle Ruger. The brothers wasted no time in asserting their dominance, forcing the Eastern Roman Empire to sign a treaty one year later. Initially, the Romans paid a retainer to the Hun for their services as mercenaries, but under Attila, it would become a form of extortion and coercion. In 440, they broke this treaty and turned their attention to the borders of the Roman Empire. They began a bloody assault on the north bank of the Danube. The Hun were feared for their deadly horseback proficiency. A Hun child was raised in the saddle, learning to ride as sure as they learned to walk. Indeed, the first cultures who first encountered them believed them to be half men, half beast, like centaurs. So close was their bond with their horses. Accustomed to the icy steppes of the north, Hun horses were faster, more hardy than the Roman equivalent, stronger and more resistant to disease. <laughs> Complementing their maneuverability, hum bows were a prized weapon. The bows were as beautiful as they were deadly. They could kill at 150 meters, safe from the range of their enemy's weapons. A Hun arrow fired from horseback is estimated to hit with the speed and power of a modern bullet. The Huns tore through the Danube and took Nisus in 443. Such was the bloodshed that the river was said to be bloated with blood and bones of the victims for years to come. They didn't stop here, and through a series of savage mobile campaigns laid waste to the Eastern Roman Empire, reaching as far as Constantinople. Emperor Theodosius, wary of losses, negotiated peace with the Hun once more. Attila knew the surest route to dominance by spreading terror through the creation of his own legend. A legend built on the bones of his enemies, including his very own brother. In 445, it said that Attila had Blader murdered in his sleep, and upon his death, took control of the entire Hun Empire. This empire was a melting pot of different tribes and cultures, a half million barbarians, any of which could vie for power in a moment of weakness. They had to be controlled with a ruthless iron fist. Attila exploited and amplified his reputation at every opportunity. He arranged with enemy forces for deserters to be returned to him for punishment, where they were executed as warning to others. In 446, Attila's forces descended like a swarm across the Black Sea and pillaged, desecrated, and slaughtered their way across the Mediterranean. He's said to have been observed laughing from horseback, eyes wide with glee at the slaughter. He rampaged through Greece and Eastern Europe, sacking and conquering over 100 cities. It was said that the dead were countless. By 450, Attila was an almost unmatched power in the Eastern Roman provinces. Knowing this, and seeking to escape an arranged marriage, the sister of Western Emperor Valentinian III wrote to Attila, appealing for his aid and proposing an alliance. Attila, taking this as a wedding proposal, used the plea to his advantage. He claimed the proposal legitimate and demanded half the Western Roman Empire as dowry. When he was inevitably refused, he used it as the excuse he'd always wanted and attacked the Roman heartland. He 
entered Gaul and attempted to put Orleans under siege. However, a Roman general, Flavius Aetius, had managed to do the unthinkable by uniting Rome with their traditional enemies, the disparate tribes of the Visigoths, Alans, and Burgundians. Together, they stood against the crashing tide of the Hun in one of the most decisive battles in history. For the first time in his rule, Attila's forces met their match, and after a long and brutal battle, now known as the Battle of the Catalonian Plains, the Hun were finally pushed back. The battle was so vicious, the soldiers had to sate their thirst from rivers thick with blood and gore. Attila could not be subdued for long, however, and the following year, the scourge of God struck once again, attacking Italy and Rome itself. Once again, towns and cities quaked before him, many refusing to stand in opposition. Such was now his reputation for savagery. Finally, at the gates of Rome, Emperor Valentinian sent a delegation to Brook for peace. Wary, Attila's army succumbing to disease and his homeland threatened by the Eastern Roman Empire behind him, he performed his last great coup. Attila demanded gold and safe passage to his homelands and received them. Returning home and never one to settle, Attila took yet another wife. In the tradition of the Huns, the wedding was a raucous and drunken affair, and Attila, now some 50 winters old, was not the drinker he once was. He passed out on his back in his wedding tent. When he was discovered, he had choked to death on his own blood. Attila was honored in death, sealed in three great coffins of iron, silver, and gold, and interred in a secret location, still a mystery to this day. In keeping with a life of savage violence, the men who interred Attila were slain, that Attila the Hun's final resting place be lost to time. Even in death, Attila brought death.